Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? Please type yes in the chat room. Yes, yes, yes. All right. Welcome, everyone, to today's special event. This is Donna at E Lotus. <laughs> I'm playing a joke with you. Donna's in the back. Today, I'm doing the MC because it's a special event. My name is Tina Chen. I'm with Evergreen Herbs. And I'm hosting today's special event because um, the teacher today, the speaker today, is a very, very close friend of mine and also like a family. So I figure, why don't I just do the intro and um, the MC? So um, let's do a little housekeeping first before I um, start, okay? Can you guys check to see if you all can see the chat room? And when you're looking at the chat room at the bottom where it says two, can you all turn it to host and attendees or all panelists as attendees or everyone? So this way, whatever you type in the chat room, everybody else can see. Do you see that? So the default is set to send a message only to us, but you want everybody else to see your chat. So turn it either to, to everyone or to all panelists and attendees. That's the first thing. And the second is, do you see a Q&A uh, button at the bottom of Zoom? So the Q&A is where you should ask your questions. So today my plan is to bombard Dr. Chang with questions. Hopefully he's in a good mood to answer them all. Um, so let's put the questions in the Q&A so we don't miss anybody's question. So as he goes over each case later today, we'll stop after each case and then we'll go into question and answer, okay? He will take a look at the Q&A and answer your question before we move on to the next case. Okay, and then every hour we will take a 10 minutes break uh, and then come back again to resume. Okay, so a little intro of Dr. Chang for those of you who are new. Uh, can you type in new to the chat room so I can see how many people are new to Dr. Chang? Never heard him before. New, new, two new people. Okay, that's not bad. Three, four, five, one. Okay, so most of you, well, Hey, Eileen, you're not new, I know, you're a Sufu. <laughs> okay, so Dr. Chang, I met 24 years ago, actually 1997, and I received an email from um, Dr. Chang from Taiwan. And at the time I was already running the herb company with John, my brother, and he emailed us to say that he was coming to America to make sure we have enough herbs for him. So I thought, wow, who's this doctor, you know? How can I not have enough herbs for a doctor? So when he actually came, he came to my um, come, came to my warehouse to visit just to check, and he looked at the warehouse for the herbs that he usually uses, and he said, "You don't have enough." You know. Then that was when I told him, "Okay, I will fly airship some uh, herbs for you if I actually don't have enough and I run out." And indeed, after two months, I ran out of herbs for him. So from there, I thought, "Wow, I really had to fly in some airmail some herbs over for him, because he is really a big customer." I think within half a year to a year, he was already using herbs, more herbs than the acupuncture schools here in Los Angeles. So I was very impressed because um, there are two ways where uh, you can run a practice. One is you really know your, your, your trick and trade where you're very good and the patients get better. The other is you are very good at running the business, right? So you can talk your patients to keep coming back for I don't know how long, a year or two. And then keep giving them herbs, but they're not very, maybe they're not getting better or they're getting only a little bit better. So either you're very good at the skill or you're very good at business. And I know he's very good in the, the, the skills. The reason is because he doesn't even talk to his patients. If you have been to his clinic, you will know that he just takes the pulse. Maybe new patients, 10 minutes, old patients, maybe five minutes, uh, maybe now a little bit longer because you know uh, he likes to take it easy now. He's semi-retired. But after COVID hit, it's even shorter because you know he wants to reduce the exposure. So with that, if you're only seeing patients for five minutes, you're not talking to them. I don't think there's too much of those uh, you know, emotional and mm, psychological type of treatment when we offer our patients when we talk to them. So he doesn't do the talking, he just gives them herbs. So for somebody who can use that much herbs without talking to the patients, that was when I figured, well, he must know something, right? So from that time on, we would deliver the herbs to him and then we became good friends. And then when we start the, when I start the class, I'll show you some slides from before so you can see um, 
you know, as we got to know each other better, then I thought, hey, Dr. Cheng, would you like to teach? And then he said, yeah. So he's a great spirit. And this is, Dr. Cheng is one of the most generous teachers I know who doesn't hold back anything, you know, because if you ever, ever study with a Chinese teacher, you know that they have to like you. And then for them to like you, that means you have to sweep their floors for many, many months, you know, and sometimes maybe... <laughs> This is a joke between me and some of my Chinese friends. Like, oh, maybe maybe you date their daughter or your or their son, right? And then the the teacher will feel like, oh, okay, he's serious or she's serious. Maybe that will become my daughter or son-in-law one day. So I'll pass on everything. So they're more likely to teach you stuff. And then finally, usually most Chinese teachers they will hold back their information. And then eventually, if you do marry into the family, then they'll teach you everything. That's just how the culture works. But Dr. Chang is not like that. He always discovers something new in the clinic and then he, he, you know, he just cannot wait to share it with everybody. So he shares it with me and then I cannot wait to share it with all of you. So let's, um, let's get started today. I'm very excited and very grateful that he has come back out to teach. You know, he has been in hibernation for like two, three years and, you know, just in his practice. So in this uh, few years when he hasn't been teaching, he has discovered some really good new formulas. And I love this because he has so many patients. So um, I just take his formulas and give it to my patients. So I don't have to really, you know, reinvent the wheel. Uh, whatever he says works, I just use it. And then I ask him why it works. Sometimes when he's in a good mood, he'll tell me. Sometimes when he's not, he won't. But let's try to get it out of him today. Okay, everybody, help me out. <laughs> All right. So. When I was talking about this class particularly, you know, we thought about what kind of class should we give because we have already, he has already really talked about everything, you know, almost all topics, pulses and herbs. But um, what happens is after you learn these fundamentals of pulse taking and herb prescription, the next thing is to go to his clinic and intern. And when you sit next to him, it really makes a big impact on you because you can, you, can, you can see how fast he sees the patients. You can feel the pulses right after he feels the patient's pulses and then look at his herbal prescription. But since we cannot do that with COVID, so I figure you know, with him, we talked about it and we thought, okay, maybe the next best thing is to do a virtual internship where pretty much um, we discuss the cases because when you're actually in his clinic, he does not have time to discuss the cases with you. You had to figure it out yourself later why he prescribes it. If there is like a gap or if there's a cancellation, there are some time he will discuss it, but then otherwise it's not going to be like today where he will discuss in detail. So actually, I actually think today's class is, uh, uh, other than you cannot feel the pulse of the patient better than actual internship. But then when COVID is over, I still do suggest you to go there just to feel mm, what it's like to be sitting next to a master learning the skills like the old times. Okay, so thanks for putting up with my little intro. For those of you who are already advanced students, I know some of some of us, you know, the earlier students are like Dr. Bob Dong, Cindy Chamberlain, you know, Scott. They have already been practicing and some of them are already teaching pulse diagnosis. You know, you can, you know, Chris Velosky is teaching, Bob Dong is teaching, and then who else is teaching? I think Jason in Spain is teaching. Um, and then also, I'm not sure in South America if, if anybody is teaching his method or not. But today we're gonna go a little bit, um, we're gonna talk about the cases. So there will be something for everybody, every level, okay? So let's start the class. I'm gonna advance the slide. Okay. So the first slide, um, just to tell you that Dr. Cheng, when he was seeing patients in Taiwan, he was seeing about 100 patients a day, or maybe more, I'm not sure, but he was able to because in Taiwan, they have morning shift, afternoon shift, and evening shift. Evening, I think they see patients until 10 o'clock. And his clinic is set up where he has a computer. He enters all the intake in the computer. And the prescription goes directly to the pharmacy and the pharmacy girls would mix up the herbs and give it to the patient. So all he's really doing is he is just taking pulses and writing the prescriptions. Okay, and I just want you guys to know that Dr. Chang is a genius because he actually didn't go to Chinese medicine school. He self-taught and then he, he um, took the Taiwan national exam for the Chinese medicine license. And in Taiwan, the license is so hard to get, only about 3% of the people pass. So 
we're so lucky that he, you know, is able to figure all this out himself, along with whatever that he learned from his sifu, and then came this far to the United States and help us all with that. If you're interested in how his uh, background and his story of how he started as a practitioner, we have actually um, interviewed him with three clips here. The part one, part two, and part three, it goes over Dr. Cheng's background, you know, how he became interested and in what he did when he first started practicing, et cetera. So you can take a look at the YouTube videos you know, on your own time, okay? This next slide is Dr. Cheng Sifu 40 years ago. So Dr. Cheng Sifu looks like a very serious man and I think he, he was, he's not funny like Dr. Cheng. So learning from him must have been tough, I think. So then the next slide here is Dr. Cheng um, started teaching with us some 20 years ago. So you can see that's there, that's Dr. Cheng on the left. And then there's John and me in the background. You know, we were holding small classes at first, small workshops. And then these are all pictures of his past courses that we held uh, with him. These were all workshops. Nothing was like the big pulse energy workshop where we just talked about pulse taking. These were actual workshops where people practice on one another. And then some of the pictures of the after class dinner parties. And then uh, down the bottom, Dr. Cheng is also an artist. So that's his painting in the back and also you know, the little artwork that he did. All right, so if you do go to his clinic, this is what you will see, okay? This is his clinic in Roland Heights. Oh no, Hacienda Heights. It's next to the biggest temple in in America, I think, maybe not only in California, but in America, the Xilai Temple, he's maybe five minutes from that. It's a good tourist attraction to go to when you come visit him. And when you enter his clinic, this is where his front office is. The girls uh, sit inside. And I asked him to take some pictures. And right now, you see this is the waiting area, but you see a lot of boxes and paintings because of COVID, uh, nobody's waiting in the waiting area. Everybody's waiting outside. So he just stocks them up with supplies now, but that I wanted to show you the waiting area and his paintings. So this is another wall of the waiting area. Horses. Okay. So when you are interning with him or you become a patient of his, what happens when you first go in the clinic is that, you know, other, feel, other than filling out the consent form and your basic information, the nurse will take the blood pressure and the heart rate in a room first. So why the heart rate and the blood pressure? Because this gives Dr. Ching an ob objective idea of whether the patient is excess, deficient, has has indeficiency fire or blood stasis. So if you wanna learn more about that, I linked the article there for you. There's a eLotus article writing blood pressure and heart rate. So I summarize it for you. You know, if the systolic is too high, diastolic is too low, if the, you know, if the heart rate is too fast, what does all that mean? It's actually a good way to look at the body objectively and not pick the wrong herbs, okay? And then next, Dr. Cheng, you know, after the nurse takes the blood pressure and the heart rate, then they go back to the waiting room and Dr. Cheng will call them into the pulse taking room. And Dr. Cheng will first look at the arm, look at the palm, uh, and then look at the pulse. Okay, take, take the pulse and then look at the ear. And then he'll write a prescription and he'll save it in his computer. So his intake form is not like ours where he writes out everything. He has already put the most common things on the um, intake form and then he would just circle. So I will show you that intake form in a bit. Okay, so when he's looking at the arms and he's looking at the, the palm, we have a little YouTube video for you to see too because Dr. Cheng did a little short summary of what what the diagnosis are, if you see green veins here as opposed to here and then on the palm, what do they all mean? You can watch the video. So that's extra bonus for you to watch outside of class, okay? And when he's checking the vein, just remember, when something is red, that means there is inflammation. This also applies to the ear too. When something, when the veins are green, blue, purple, or black, 
that just means degree of stagnation from mild to severe. So when you see a black vein, for sure, there's more blood stasis, okay? So here you will see Dr. Chang's uh, room where the patient goes in to take the pulse. Now, what do you call that? The acrylic separation piece? It's just put up because of COVID. So a patient just sticks in the hand for Dr. Chang to take the pulse. Before there wasn't a screen, but now I don't know how long COVID is gonna last, but it would be up until COVID is over. So pretty much they're just sticking in their hand. Dr. Chang is just feeling the hand, the, you know, feeling the pulse. And then the computer on the left is where he puts in the prescription. And then he prints out the label for the pharmacy to mix the herbs. I'll show you the pharmacy and also the, how the label looks in the new, next few slides. Okay, so in his pharmacy, he has over a hundred single herbs and formulas in the extract powder form. We have been supplying the herbs for him for over 20 some years since he, you know, since he came. So there's a form that you can download as well of all his formula that he uses, he buys from us. So in case you're wondering what he uses, uh, it's in the same page where you downloaded the lecture notes. I think you should see a form. And also there are some of uh, um, the, the, the herbs in there. Basically, if you have any questions, you can email me. My email is in there. His pharmacy, he organizes by categories. So he organizes by category because when you're treating a certain condition, he usually uses the same uh, group of herbs. But my pharmacy, um, what I do is I organize it by pin in. So this way, anybody can pick the herbs for me. Um, but I guess he, everybody who works at his clinic are Chinese, so they don't read pin in, then mm, that's not as practical. So you can organize however you want. You know, you can group them by chapters or you can group them by um, alphabetical order. Okay, so when the herb prescription are made, he sends it to the pharmacy, the nurses will mix the herbs with a scale. And then how to mix the herbs with scale, I also put a YouTube link for you. That link is um, Donna explaining how to mix the herbs to make 100 grams for the patients. So if you're new to using herbal granules, you can um, watch that video to get an idea. All right, here is his pharmacy. Now, if you take a look, all his herbs are laying down flat with the cap facing the front. And the reason for that is because he can stack more, right? So if you look at, uh, look, at look, to the, look to the left, let's say, for example. So you have five bottles stacked on top of one another, right? That's how his wife keeps inventory. When a particular item is low, you can see it right away. So when you're doing inventory count to reorder, it's very clear which herbs you need to order because it will be low, right? Because each of those formula, he wants five in stock always. And for those pre-made formulas of his, you know what I'm talking about? If, if you're an advanced student, if you're new, you will learn that Dr. Chang has many of his own combinations. He calls it like, I don't know, Club Combo, um, USA One, Gallbladder One, Water One. He gives them all these names. So those are just nicknames for the formula that he has found um, to be very useful, certain herbs when they're combined together. So he gives it a formula name. And so to prevent the pharmacy from having to pick the same herbs over and over again, he would pre-mix a bunch and put them into a jar. So if you look at his pharmacy and then look at, take a look at the table on the right, do you see the Kirkland uh, chocolate bottle, chocolate, uh, chocolate chip or chocolate almond chocolate, you know, those big bottles, those are his pre-mixed formulas. So this way, you know, if a uh, formula consists of seven ingredients, but four of them could be already pre-mixed because he uses them all the time. So he would mix them first. So the pharmacist, the nurse would only have to open two bottles to mix the formula instead of seven. Does that make sense? So um, if it doesn't make sense, um, I'll explain to you later in the chat room. But pretty much it's just to save time because they see so many patients. It doesn't make sense to open the same bottles again and again to make the same fixed formula. All right. Next slide. Um, here is a video of 
Oh, sorry. So the previous video was actually John explaining uh, what does Fang Jia Fang mean when you combine formula, what does it mean? Here is um, Donna doing the demo on how to actually mix the formulas. And so Dr. Chang would mix, um, Dr. Chang's pharmacist would mix 100 grams for the patient and 150 grams for those who are coming from far away because it makes more sense to take a, you know, to do a longer time. And he gives them a discount. Um, the charge for the herbs is $60 for 100 grams and 85 for 150 grams. So this is for the general area in Los Angeles. I don't know which area you're in. I think you should price them according to what area and what type of clients you're seeing. But in general, it's that price, 60 for 100 grams, 85 or 150 grams. And consultation, Dr. Char Dr. Chang charges $50. So you can charge however much you want, um, depending on how long you spend with the patient to do the evaluation. And then his clinic is cash only, no insurance. Okay, so here is, uh, here is the video on what does Fang Jia Fang mean. Um, the reason people ask this is if you, if you look at Dr. Chang's formula, you will see that, oh, sometimes he combines four or five formulas. Then you will wonder, well, if you break it all up into single herbs, wouldn't gan cao be the king herb, right? And how does that work? So what happens is when you're using extract granules, all the formulas are extracted together. So when they're extracted together, that means it's like a single herb. So when you are using four formulas, it's really like using four single herbs because single herbs also have multiple functions, like formulas have multiple functions. So it's not the equivalent of all the individual ingredients in the formulas when you combine them together. It's kind of like when you make tomato soup, right? You would put all the ingredients in and cook them together. There's some sort of chemical reaction that would happen that yields the final product of the tomato soup. It would taste different if you cook all the individual ingredients separately and then mix them together, right? So what I'm saying is if you want to use single herbs to mix a formula, as opposed to just using a formula, the effect would not be very much the same. All right, let's go to the next slide. Okay, so this is how his bottles look. He uses um, the empty bottle on the right that we supply to him. You can buy this from us either in the round bottle form or the square bottle form, or if you're already ordering herbs, it's best to recycle, I think. You know, you can take the existing herb bottles, peel off the label and reuse the bottle. I think that's best for the environment. So on his label, you would see that, you know, he puts the today's date where he sees the patient and then the name of the patient and also the chief complaints of the patient. And the reason why he puts the chief complaint is because sometimes the patient doesn't even remember what they came in for, okay? So, or don't even remember what you gave them the herbs for. So he puts them there. And each time you will tell your patient to shake the herbs because the heavier herbs will sink to the bottom, you know, making the mixture not so even. So it's better to shake it each time. And then on the side, he has his information and also his phone number. So when people need to refill, they can call him or email him. So that's pretty convenient and very good for um, the business aspect for people to come and reorder. And Dr. Chang tells the patients you can reorder the herbs three times. And then you need to come back for a reevaluation. He wants to check your pulse again, just to see if anything changes so that he should change the formula. But most, most patients, when they email him or call him, they will tell him how they're doing on the herbs. If they experience this or that, he will tweak the formula a little bit. But after three bottles, they will come back for another pulse evaluation. So that's something for you to consider. Maybe you can do that as well. Okay. Here, he also has a sign in his clinic that shows how to um, pick the herbs. So pretty much you just um, take three spoonfuls three times a day, or maybe he uses more now. He will tell us in a bit, okay, how much he instructs the patients to take it. But make sure you tell them to take it with warm water. Don't use juice, coffee, soda, or whatever else, okay? Okay, so here is a summary of um, what I was just talking about. You know, 
the 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 how how many grams each bottle is and also the dosing no the dosing is not correct and here i was was talking about the formulas that he pre-mixes um you know in those costco chocolate uh, jars um some of the previous ones you know when he lectured with us long time ago um like astringent complex for example gardenia complex is usa one Flex Spur is the case study that I just put on Facebook yesterday on acupuncturist online, you know, with the patient's bone spur before and after picture. So I was really excited to see that actually the bone spur went away. So that's his formula, Flex Spur. So we have made some of his um, pre-mixed formulas already in the form of capsules and granules. So you can order them if you like, just in that form, you don't have to mix it yourself. But a lot of other formula, most of the other formula, actually, you have to mix yourself. Okay. So the ingredients to the formulas, um, you can download, like I was telling you, on the course access page. Um, the lecture, next to the lecture notes, you can download the ingredient sheet. And if you want to look at the explanation, you can go to the clinical manual. We wrote, we wrote about how the formula works, what does it treat, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so the link is the elotus.org e-manual. And if you put in username Lotus and CD manual as the password, you can go in to look at those formulas that Dr. Chang has and then take a look at the ingredients and how they work. And I would bark, bookmark this page because this access will disappear once your course cannot be accessed. You know, once your course access expires, you won't see this link anymore. But if you save the link and save the username and password, you can access it after the course access is over. All right, let's go to the intake form. So this is actually Dr. Chang's intake form. Every time the patient comes in, he just does a lot of circling. So if you don't understand what he's circling or what his abbreviations are, it will be kind of difficult to follow. So let me go over this really quickly. So then when he talks about the case studies after uh, I finish, you will know what he means when he circle this and that, okay? So on the very top, right, you have first visit, then return visit, and I'll let me, let me see, annotate, draw. Okay, so this return visit, today's date. And then you, he will put the name, the age, you know, that's pretty self-explanatory, right? Here's the blood pressure, the heart rate. And then he will circle what the tongue looks like and what the complexion is like. So next, you have the NAIC 1 PC6 area. This is when he is examining the palm and the, the arm. So he will circle whether the PC area looks pale or dark or does it have black lines, and that all equals nervousness. And then next, he will look at the lung 10 area to see if it's, you know, what color it is, dark, purple. So he will just circle. It's pretty self-explanatory here. So the lung area, PC area, and heart area, this is on the elbow, what he sees over here. You know, if he sees a dark vein on which channel, he would circle it, and what color, he would circle it. And then next is uh, this REN22 area. How does it feel? Is it hot or is it warm? And then large intestine area, large intestine 10 area, if it's cold or hot, as opposed to the palm, that's another thing when he detects the parasites. And he will talk about that when he gets to to a case with parasites. Not today, today is mostly on pain. And then also the palm, How? what's the temperature? Okay. And then here's kidney cell input radio pulse. This is a pulse that is right here. So he would feel the pulse here. And this is to detect the blockage, hidden type of hypertension. And he will talk about that when he talks about hypertension, but not this class. But I just wanna let you know what that is, okay? Okay, so next you see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bullets. So these seven bullets are pretty much the problems that you find on the right and the left chun guan zi. So let's go over it really quick, and I want you to take notes. Why don't you write down what the abbreviation means so that you know what, what, what it is when he circles it? So first you have allergy. URI is upper respiratory infection. Cough, right? AS is asthma phlegm, and nasal or skin. So he will circle any of these. EX is exterior, heat, right? 
chest, large intestine for LI. The next one is hemorrhoid, polyps, CAN. Any guesses for CON? Constipation. Constipation, good. And what's the IA? Diarrhea. Anybody? The diarrhea. In the in the chat room, type in the chat room. Diarrhea. Yes. Okay. So next you have stomach, sugar, ulcer. U L yeah. is ulcer. Of course. G A S T R I is gastritis. Yeah. And then next we have the right shi. So the first one, this one was the this one was the right sun. Second is right guan. And this one's right shi now. Right shi you can detect neck, shoulder, disc injury. What's STD? Soft tissue damage. <laughs> it's soft tissue damage. When I first saw that, I was like, wow, you can it's see that from the right shi. So, but that's soft tissue damage, okay, everybody? And headache. UT. Any guesses for UT? Urinary tract. Hey, Dr. Urinary. Chen is getting it all right. It's urinary tract. So it's just a urinary tract infection. It's also detected on the right shi, okay? And then PR. Anybody? PR? PR is for prostate. And then UA. UA is uric acid. Okay. So that concludes the right hand. Left hand, we have to start small intestine, SI, and you have gas, right? That's the rainbow pulse, chest, heart, shortness of breath. ARR is arrhythmia. You have arthritis, injury, STD again, soft tissue damage. Dizziness and vertigo. That's all found on the right, I mean, sorry, left chun. And then the left one, you have liver, hepatitis, fatty liver. And then energy, mood, and AX is anxiety. DEP is depression. So many of these people, so many, so many. STR is stress. So Anxiety, depression, and stress. Almost every patient, you have to circle one of them. And just a little fun fact for you, Evergreen at Evergreen, our number one, number one product that every month we sell thousands and thousands of bottles more than the number two product is something for <laughs> the stress, anxiety, depression. It's the commonest formula. I don't know, it's just too many people need that in this country. All right, next we have insomnia. And then you have a gallbladder, okay? This, is that clear, everybody? Gallbladder is the last one that you can detect for gallstone on the left one. And then finally, you have the left two where you can find out if they have back pain, this injury, if they have any hormone imbalance, any menstrual problem, stagnation, or cysts. And then again, PRO is prostate. No, it's and the next is you can find out if they have any scar tissue. What pro, happened? Pro, no, come on. PRO is prolapse. Prolapse. Oh, sorry. It's a different PRO. Hmm. Prolapse. Prolapse, scar tissue, and adhesion all together. And then hernia. VV is varicose varical seal and varicose vein. Yep. Stone. And then genital and inflammation, okay? So that's pretty much uh, the most common problems you can find with the pulse. And then right under that here, he would uh, circle if there's any thyroid problem or if the, okay, all these in bold here, all these texts in bold are the general feeling of what the pulse feels like. So if the pulse feels like there's a lot of heat and expanding, he will circle it, you know, uh, or if the pulse feels like, oh, it's very constricted, he will circle constriction. Or if the pulse feels very weak, he would just circle weak. So he's not really writing anything down on his um, intake form. I think this is so brilliant. It's a lot, takes a lot less time. I'm trying to figure out how to do it all on the iPad now. You know, probably can import this picture and I'm just circle it all and then save it. Then you don't have to have any Manila folders and don't have to have any paper. Okay, next. Any questions?
Oh no, it's stuck. Okay, I think I have to stop the the annotate, right? Okay, I think that's all for me on my part on introduction. Uh, next, Dr. Chang is gonna take over with the case study. So Dr. Chang, can you share your screen, please? Okay, you have to click get out and I'll bring my uh, document in. Yeah, can I share your PowerPoint? Yes, get out. Okay, let me get out. Yep. Stop share. Okay, okay, I stop share. Where do I start? On top or on bottom, there's a green share screen. You know, the green, green screen with the arrow pointing on top. Uh, you want me to lock in? No, share screen. Uh, on the bottom, middle, bottom, next to the chat. Nope, there's nothing here. Oh my God, he has naked girls in his background. So did you I, find it? I don't see it. Okay, can you move your mouse to the bottom of the screen? Yeah, nothing here. Oh, Zhang Yixin, you see it? It's here. It's here. What's here? 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 His mouse is at the bottom, but he doesn't see the share screen. Okay, you know what? Since you cannot find it, why don't I advance the slide for you for now? And when we take a break, we'll figure it out. How about Zhang Yixi? Just use my PowerPoint. I'll tell you, you say the next one, I'll give you the next one. No, 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 no. You first go out. I'm out. No, I can't get in. I don't have anything to get in. I don't have anything to get in. I don't have anything to get in. 嗯，那我还是先用我的好了。等一下我们 break 的时候再来搞。不行不行，不要不要不要不要吵，我一下就好了。奇怪的，你现在的 screen 你有看到什么？什么都没有啊。Do you see your PowerPoint? Do you see? Are you in the Zoom room? 你可以看到我吗 ？I see your picture. I see your person, but I don't. 应该底下有一个 share the file， 可是什么都没有哎、欸。No, you want to share the screen. No, that that window. So, Rina, you can see me. Okay. Last time, you can use your phone to take a picture of what you see on your screen and text it to me. Yeah. See nothing. Okay. You go to the Zoom logo. Do you do you find the Zoom meeting logo? Yeah. Okay. Click on the Zoom meeting. You have to go to the Zoom meeting. Ah, no, it's strange. At night, there's. You should be in that Zoom meeting. It should be a small icon at the bottom, or somewhere you put it. Okay. 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 You're there now. Good. 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 好，这个就是 Zoom meeting. 好，等一下啊。Can you go to the bottom and share screen? Yes. Yes. Hold on. Yay. 对不对？ No. Okay, now can you open your PowerPoint? Yeah, there you go. This is harder than pulse diagnosis. Every time there's some surprise. Can you see it? Yeah. Can you see it? Yes. Can you expand the whole, whole PowerPoint? Oh. 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 你把左边那个 slide 缩小一点。对对对，好，好了，这样可以吗？可以，很好。OK。OK。Thank you。Anybody can hear me? Hello. Can you hear me now? 
Yes, Dr. Dr. Cheng, um, we do hear you. Okay. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is Jimmy Chen. I am going to talk about this virtual in internship case study for today's uh, two hours. You may call it seminar, whatever. Okay, about the dosage Tina was talking about is not correct. The, the good dosage is about, uh, let me see, I put it down here. It's something like this. Can you see this screen? Dosing is about at least 16 grams to 20 grams a day. If the, the patient is very choppy and make it 24 or something. And each time is three big spoons. The spoon is coming with the uh, with your bottle or whatever. Then you can uh, use it. So the, at least 16, 16, huh? Okay. Okay, let's begin with this. This is my painting. Hope you like it. First, I look at the hand. Okay, two T. You see the darkness here and here? That means cholesterol. If you have too much darkness, it means the cholesterol is pretty high. This, uh, if uh, this is the cholesterol, cholesterol area. Actually, this is the fatty liver. It's too fat in on the finger, that means fatty liver. This area, see some blue lines there, that means some back pain with old injury. This area is for stomach digestion. If you see some blue lines there, that means the digestion is very poor. And um, this area, If you see some dots or some redness there, that means liver is no good. Maybe some hepatitis or some natural, uh, the liver deficiency or inflammation. And this always connected with sugar, this, this redness here. And for ladies, the redness here is something with the breast. You should check her not the breast, check her ear point to find out the breast. Huh? And this area, like we talked about in the previous uh, pain seminar, this, this darkness means that the peripheral circulation is terrible. So we must do something for uh, like a shentong zhu yu tang or something like that. But anyway, I'm trying to tell you the shape of the fingertips here, that means the neck and shoulder. If the, 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 the finger is a little bended or something, that means his uh, neck is bended. And this, the tip of the finger represents the, the head. If the finger tip is too pointy, that means his head is very narrow. Or if the point is a little swollen like this, that means his head is swollen. So gotta have a lot of it. Uh, headaches and dizziness, something like that. Huh? You can check the uh, palm, then you can say a lot of things. Okay. Uh, Where's the rubber? Any questions? This is just the beginning. Okay. This is the ear. Okay. This is, this area is the large intestine. If you see some redness, then it's inflammation. If you see some, uh, okay. this must be some hemorrhoid or something. This area is the urinary tract. You see something red. Then you know it's the uh, inflammation of the bladder or urinary tract. If you see some dark spot there, then you know there's a lump or cyst. This sciatica area, and this area is the knee joints. This guy is not too bad. This is the, um, sorry, this is wrong. This area is neck and shoulder, not the hip. Huh? This is stomach. This guy has a stomach. I wouldn't say it's, uh, it's a tumor, but something definitely in the stomach. 
if he want to treat his stomach pain or something, you gotta use something like my sister breaker or my lump combo, which I describe in my WhatsApp group, or anything can destroy the uh, lump. See that? That's the reason for his stomach pain, huh? Okay. Okay. Again, this is the lump. See the lump? This is the, for women, is the ovaries, the men is testicle. If something here, we can see the testicle area. The, the things we mentioned earlier, VC means varicose seal, which means a lot of veins is swollen in his testicle that will cause infertility. On uh, next Wednesday, I'll be talking about exclusively for infertility. I have a very interesting case. Do not blame all the infertility to women. Sometimes it's men's problem. You can check the, the husband's here to notify them. It's not your problem, lady. It's your husband's problem. And this one is a lady, or anyway, this along here. This is neck and shoulder, so the hip, not too bad. Oh, this is the hemorrhoid large intestine. And this is also the stomach. See the stomach area? Area is dark. So that means some old ulcer that heal, maybe a scar in there. If it causes pain, then you can use my uh, result lower, lung specials, things like that. Huh? Okay, now this is the best part of the day. Okay, I'm sure you can see it, huh? Oh, I'm talking about this is the Bagua pulse. That one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, the first one is the colon and the head. Try to bear that, huh? Try to remember that. Second one is lung and mouth. This is very interesting. The third one is heart and eye. <clears throat> eye problem and heart. Don't ask me why. I don't know. I just know it. Liver and foot. The, the pulse like this is liver and foot. What kind of a pulse? I will explain it right away. This is the gallbladder. This pulse like this. And hip. The sixth one, oh, this is most commonly seen. is the kidney, ear. Kidney also means the uh, urination problem. Seven is stomach and uh, and hand. This false stomach and hand. And the eighth one is the uh, is the uh, this is most also most commonly seen. This means earth doesn't matter. You don't have to worry about it. Doesn't mean much. It's the spleen and abdominal area, abdominal area. This one is very interesting. So how do we feel the pulse? This first one is the superficial, and this is the middle, and this is the deep area. So if you check the pulse, I always tell you that when you check the pulse, you have to take it very uh, lightly, very light, very light. When you check the pulse, on the, maybe it's on the right foot because it's large intestine. The first one is when you gently touch his skin, the jump is very strong. The rebound is very strong. And you push down a little bit, then you find that the middle is more stronger. And push down until you touch his bone. There's no place else to go. Then you still find the rebound of the pulse. Then you can tell this is a three solid line, not any broken line. Broken line means weakness. Huh? So when the when the pulse like this, 
then you can tell definitely he has something with his head, like headaches and something, and something definitely inflammation in his large intestine, the colon. Huh? This one is this. It's very accurate. You'll be amazed how accurate it is. And this one is very interesting too. I see it every day. When you gently touch the patient's pores, the surface of the skin, the, the, there's no, no jump, no rebound. So it's a broken line. Broken line means weakness. Then you keep your finger pressed down and you see the rebound appear in the middle. And when you press down more, touch the skin, I mean, touch the bone, and still rebound. Oh, now he knows this. You can, you can also tell there's something wrong with his uh, respiratory system, inflammation, allergy or something, and especially something in his mouth. This is very interesting. Maybe like cold sore or, or any virus infection or something like that. It's very accurate and interesting. The patient will be so amazed. How come you know my mouth? <laughs> the third one is the same thing. But again, when you touch, check the pulse, you have to do it very lightly, gently. When you touch the pulse, oh, the rebound is very strong, in this, uh, very close to the skin. And then push down a little bit, ooh, disappear. And again, it's like this. This is the heart and eye problem. Don't ask me why. Just do it. So the heart has something wrong with the heart. Maybe it's chemia. Maybe it's the heart infection or injury or the the the, polyp, not, the prolapse of the valve or something like that. You can also check the normal tongue and the check the earlobe. See if the heart is a little problem or not. So the fourth one. Ah, this is more interesting. When you gently touch the skin, it's very weak, no rebound. You keep on pushing down, still no rebound, very weak. And push down more, haha, -ha, you got a rebound, very strong. This, the trick, that's a little tricky about taking the pulse. You have to uh, reverse, check the pulse reversely. How do you do that reversely? Can, can you see me? Anyway, when you push down, when you push down all the way to the bottom, there's no place to go, and you release your power, your the, the force of your fingers a little bit, then the rebound just suddenly appears. That means forceful at the bottom, like this. So you can definitely tell there's something wrong with this liver, and mostly it's a foot. Not only the foot, actually, it's the lower extremity. You can just show them that their, their legs, something around there. Not necessarily arthritis. Sometimes, sometimes the veins just pop out, and uh, with the darkness, with the water retention, and with inflammation, with the pain, everything on the foot or ankle or something. And you can also uh, evaluate, prove it. In the ear point, something like this. Okay, the, this this one is very popular. The this third one, huh? And the fifth one, strong in the surface, strong in the middle, and very weak at the bottom. When you push down, it just the pause just disappears. No more pause. So that's the gallbladder related and hip sciatica nerve maybe. Don't ask me why. I don't know. So it's bladder and hip areas. Must be some pain. And the weakness also means his circulation is weak. Even the pain is severe. Even the bone spur or sciatica pain is very severe. But the nature of his problem is still weakness. So you might want to tonify a little bit. Tonify the kidney young or tonify the circulation, like a huang qi jian zhong tang, something like that. And the sixth one, oh, this is very popular, very, very popular. When you gently touch the skin, it's weak. And you press down, it becomes stronger. Then you keep on pushing down to the bone, and again, it disappears. So it's something like this, weak, solid, weak. 
That's kidney, huh? Definitely kidney. What's wrong with kidney? Maybe the function is low. The EGFR is low, and maybe some kidney infection or nephrotic syndrome, something like that, huh? It's Uh, hold on. Uh, this area is the kidney, and this area is the. Uh, okay, let me do it. This is this area is kidney. So you can look at the ear. Everything seems to be fine, but this area is especially pale. That means the kidney has low function. The blood doesn't go through there. And this is the knee joints. And this is the foot or ankle. And this is the upper arm, like hand, elbow, or something. So it's a little different, huh? Okay, so this one, there's a kidney. Okay, whatever. The kidney is a little. Tricky, this. Ear, you can directly tell you have an ear problem. It's e either infection or some kind of an inner ear imbalance or maybe some raining in the ear. It got something to do with the kidney. This kidney got is 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 does it has two kind of a meaning. First, it's the real kidney, the, the kidney for the water uh, expelling, and also the kidney that we talk about is the sex and the hormonal area or adrenal glands. This kidney. So this one is very popular. Huh? You should try to get used to it and get familiar with it. And this one, the seventh one, first touch it. Skin strong. Whoa. You may say, oh, you got a big fire. You have a lot of inflammation. But when you keep keep on pushing down, it becomes weak. And again, more down, more weak. That's stomach. That's stomach and hand. Okay. The stomach and hand, huh? So something wrong with his hand and something wrong with the stomach. And the last one. Oh, this is very common. All three positions are weak. Weak, weak, weak. So that means spleen. Spleen means dampness and digestion, of course. But it also means abdominal area. Why? I don't know. Just directly tell them something wrong with your with your belly, or in the, in the a genital area, on the urination area, or the intestine, or something. But definitely something on the abdomen area. Okay. So this is the so-called bagua mai. It's not too difficult. The only thing difficult is to remember all this meaning of, of those feelings. I'm sure if you start trying taking pause uh, tomorrow, try to find the feelings. Is a solid line or is a broken line? Broken line means weak, and solid line means forceful or inflammation, something like that. Okay, let's clear it. I'm sure you have a lot of questions. Let's see. Oh my God. <laughs> okay.
That's a good question. Some a lot of people ask me, so where do you find this pulse? Left, right, Zheng Guan Zi. It can be anywhere. It's not position related, so it can be anywhere. So it, you can find this in the Sun. You can find this one in the Chi. So they he, the patient will have all the problems. For example, you can find this on the twin. You can find this in the twin too. I mean, they're not the same place, okay? Whenever you find this on the guan or on the chi, you can tell you have a problem with the uh, spleen and abdomen. You find this anywhere, then you can tell. Maybe it's on the guan, maybe even on the chi, then you can direct tell them you have head and colon problem. So the position is not so important. The important thing is the feeling. Okay. Okay. Okay, the next one, huh? Ooh. This is more interesting. This area is the normal pulse, Sun Guan Chi. And this is the, the tendon. And this is the heart seven area. Shenmen, and you can still find a pulse here. It's very small in a very limited area, something like this, smaller than the, the real one. Okay, so you can still feel this pulse. This pulse, what well, you said to, to make a diagnosis of hormonal balance, for example, the right, right hand is male. Left hand is female. So if a man, <clears throat> a big guy or small guy or old guy or whatever, his right, right, let's call it a heart seven pulse. This heart seven pulse is weak or even not detectable. That means you can directly tell him, your hormone is so low, you're so weak and tired. Okay? And for the women, that sh should be natural because. Women don't have this right right area. Does not have, not supposed to have this heart seven pulse. If a woman a woman has the pulse on the right heart area and jumpy, you can direct tell her you're so bossy and so stressful. Everybody laughs when I say that. So so a bossy woman will have a very strong heart seven pulse on the left hand side. Uh, I'm sorry on on the right hand side. Okay, for the left hand side, a woman should have very strong heart seven pulse on the left hand side. That means her hormone, including thyroid hormone or you know sex hormone, are good. If a for man, he's not supposed to have any le le uh, any this pulse on the left hand side. If he does, that means he's in his body the female hormone is over a little bit taking the male hormone. So his character may be a little funny. Okay. Then that's the very important condition. If you want to treat uh, a couple with the infertility, you have to check the pulse. A lot of women they have a very strong right hand side woman and very weak left hand side that his test testosterone may be too, too high. His uh, progesterone may be low, uh, <clears throat> and other hormone may be low. So he could not, uh, she could not ovulate normally, and doesn't have uh, normal emotional condition and uh, period. So balance it. We use some kind of a right, you uh, hui wan, zuo hui wan, zi bo di huang wan to balance them all. So this is the new part. The reason I put it here because it's difficult to explain in language in writing so I put it here it's easier to, to say it in, in wording. Okay. Any questions? Good. Okay, people ask me about my pause positions, I suggest you go to my pause 
diagnosed in YouTube. Tina has everything in it. Okay. Uh, what's the question? Can any of the trigram tri horses show up in the hospital? Do we? Yes. This, those eight papua paws can be anywhere. They still mean the same meanings. Uh, there's a question. Three scoops, five or six times, six per day, six gram, not X. Three spoon, three times a day. Three spoon almost equal to six gram, three times a day. Yeah, 15 grams at least a day for a minimum, correct. Okay, let's get on to business. Okay, this is my uh, internship uh, intake form. This is how I do my things in my office. When the, the COVID is over, I have a lot of people will be in, interning in my office, but this is what I do most of it. Uh, every day, okay. They have uh, let uh, Tina explain everything uh, about this this this, this short abbreviations and the meaning of this words in already. Now let me get down to the real business. Huh? Okay. So when I take a pause, uh, remember me. When I when a new patient sits in front of me, I look at. Shut up, don't talk. I just look at uh, uh, his palm and uh, I say a lot of things like I, I did a few minutes ago. And then I'll start taking the pause. Maybe because this, the COVID, we, my lady will not take the blood pressure. We, we don't need it. We'll just take the oxygen. Huh? If the oxygen are too low, I'll be very, very careful. Okay, I started with the nervousness, with the palm, you know, the palm with the green lines on the uh Nick one the, the, the pericardial seven uh pause uh, area the immune deficient later I always start by saying ah oh, you're so nervous you're so crazy and I check his arm if something on the elbow there's the lung area the pericardium and heart area a dark purplish green lines and which are something around your chest this is the chest. Then I'll, I'll start taking the pulse. The right twin is like this. This must be some kind of phlegm and also a skin problem. How do I know it's the skin? I'll tell you later. And then I just check the, the uh, one area. This must be some kind of a forceful and wiry and forceful pulse in the left one, which means sugar. I always tell them, be careful with the sugar and carbohydrates. Then I'll start taking the pause on the left shirt, uh, right shirt. And this little turtle pause, that means neck and shoulder. Neck and shoulder will be, uh, I, I don't use, I don't write this, I just write it down. Neck and shoulder. And this one is peculiar, very strange. Why? Almost everyone has to take this. Uh, has this. There's something like a big ball there or something. I really don't know what that is, but it's something in the urination system and also something on the neck and shoulder. Take the pulse. Okay, for those of you who have learned my pulse system, you know, when I take the pulse, I use my finger fast to feel the pulse. But afterwards, I use my fingertips very frequently, fingertips to take the pulse, especially at the shi area. You must use your fingertip to take pulse vertically. Then you will find something, you will find something totally, uh, totally different. It's very funny, I don't know why. So he, uh, he th this, this uh, lady or something, there's a lot of pain in this area. You see, I see you, the, I use my colored crayon, Brown color means blood stagnation. So doctor want him to do a operation for the neck and shoulder pain. I said, no need, no such thing. We don't need it. Okay, then take this pulse again. Left hand side, 
this is this like a turtle paws that's the small intestine so it must be very gassy usually people don't come to me for gassy problem and this one is the yang wei paws and this is also the yang wei this is the right hand side yang wei paws on the right hand side means bronchitis means the lower uh, respiratory system and the, the yang wei mai on the left hand side is arthritis Okay, arthritis. I use this, the dark color means that the circulation is bad. So maybe later I will use something to clear the stagnation. Oh, this is the liver. The, uh, the left hand side is the liver. Then you must again use your fingertips to feel the pulse. When this area is very, very weak, then it goes directly to the immune system. And if you fingertip, you might find little little bing down there. Only, you can only find it with your fingertip. That's the uh, gallstone. Okay. Hmm. And also this weak pause means either anxiety, if it's very, very deep and very, very weak, the one area almost disappeared, that would be the autoimmune deficiency. Autoimmune deficiency means his body will attack himself and it combines with depression. So if you want to treat his depression, you have to strengthen his liver, move the blood, strengthen the autoimmune system. And I'll go, let's go to the back. Okay. This is the hip, the low back, and little ball here could be the kidney stone. We can verify it uh, again in his uh, ear. This is, this is a lady. So are you brown colored? Because I think it's dead blood. Okay. Then I go to the ear. I look at the right ear first. No, the left one. See the little ball here? That's the urinary, ur urinary tract. Is the bladder infection. And the little ball here, that's the kidney. And the darkness here is the thyroid. This is the ovary for ladies. So if they have the red point, red spot on it, then there's some inflammation down there. And this, the hip, is dark. So it must be some blood stagnation. And again, the other height, the other ear, this is the rectum. This is the rectum area. And this is the urinary tract. And there's a dark spot on the uh, ovary. So maybe it's a previous uh, previous uh, operation or miscarriage or whatever. And this is the stomach. And this is the rectum, hemorrhoid or something. And this is the hip. So the major concern for her is the UTI, urinary tract infection. Neck and shoulder, mood, energy, digest. I just write down on the label so they can tell what I'm treating about. If they ask you something I cannot treat, for example, they want me to treat a ring in the ear, I will tell them directly, no, I cannot do that. So first formula, I give them almost everybody with 150 grams for two weeks. Okay. This one is a clear heat, number one. It's combined with liver detox, astringent, and five yellow. And 50% of the, no, no, I'm sorry, 30 gram of zuzu, zuzu. Okay. And the uh, bone spur formula. It has a lot of uh, the blood mover in there. So put them together, 70% of the clear heat, number one, is the combination of liver detox, astringent complex, and the five yellow. And 30% with juice. Why the juice? This is the red one. So it can clear the blood. Okay,好,我来改一下。你那个background本来是黑的,现在又变成蓝的,所以下面的都看不到。Oh, 
Onatsuri. So you have to exit the annotation. No, the black one, the black background. Just the first, take the first one, uh, the black one. The white one is okay too. Okay. <laughs> I can change it anytime. We, we, we gave okay, Dr. Chang the, the lecture notes background. He was so artistic. He changed it. So kind of hard to see the text. Oh, here we go. Okay. That's the, the herbs. So he has clear heat number one, 70%, zi zi, 30%, black spur, 50%, and some extra gan cao. He always adds like a one or two spoons of gan cao in the mix. Now, you might be wondering what are the ingredients to these clear heat, you know, and flex spur. You can find it on the herb sheet that is next to your lecture notes download, or you can find it in the clinical manual, like the flex spur that is already a um, formula in the collection section for uh, the evergreen herbs. So, Zhang Yisi, what is in the clear heat number one? Take a number for you, Astringent complex. And the uh, liver detox and the five yellow. Five yellow, astringent, and what's the first one? Forgot. What, what was the first one? Astringent, five yellow, and what? Liver detox. Liver detox. Flex spur is Zen Ren Huo Ming Yin. Jia Fu Yellow. Plus Huo Fu Zi Zi. So the question you guys should um, be asking him is this, this is a patient who wants to treat neck pain, right? Yeah. Neck pain, neck mood, pain energy. Pain. Digestion. And urinary tract, bladder infection. And bladder infection. So yes. your clear heat number one is it's, it's you're using here. it to treat what pulse? Huh? Basically, what I'm getting at is why did you prescribe this formula? Because the inflammation. Okay, where's the inflammation on the pulse? Pulse is jumpy. Okay. And here, and here, and here. So the right tune all jumpy and forceful. Mm, yes. And what is the effect of the clear heat number one? How do you use that? Just for any kind of inflammation. Yeah. Any kind of inflammation. Yes. And how about zi zi? Zi, oh, zi, zi is very good for anti-inflammation for swollen tissues, for pain, for gallbladder, for stomach, for mood swings, almost everything. So I use it to clear the heat of the joints, neck and shoulder and abdominal area, whatever, it goes everywhere because it's red. So it flows in the blood system. How about the flex spur? Isn't that for bone spur? Yeah, I thought this bone spur, sciatica nerve. Oh, for his uh, left ci. Mm. So would you say this formula is good for all sorts of pain if it's due to inflammation? If, if the patient comes yes. and they say they have pain and yes. the pulse is very inflamed and very forceful, you just use this combination? Yeah, 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 that's true. And hold on, I have a note here. Ooh. Oh. The major complaint is here. He's she's very skinny and skinny and don't eat. She doesn't eat red meat. No one is so weak, and she has pain when urinate, especially the uh, abdominal area. So that's her complaint, major complaint. Urination pain is her major complaint. Yeah. 
I always ask him, what do you want me to do for today? After I take a pulse, you know, hi guys, my point, my system or my tradition is don't ask. When you see a patient, don't ask what's wrong with you in the beginning. What, what so seems to be the problem? Why, what makes you so uncomfortable or anything? Don't ask that. Because if you ask that, the patient will not have enough respect for you. You just go on, do my system, make the diagnosis, and then finally you ask, what do you want me to do for you? If they, uh, they are so reluctant or hasty answering your question, you can guide them. You don't have any headaches. You don't have any back pain. You don't have any neck pain. You don't have any stomach problem. You sleep well. You're not feeling weak. Somebody is very, very reluctant. So you have to guide them. So, oh, oh yes, of course, I have this. Oh, yes, of course. And finally, you make a decision of what to treat first. Sometimes you cannot treat them all. Sometimes you can. It depends on your skill. Okay. Any more questions? Yeah. So if the chief complaint is urinary pain, urinary mm. tract infection, what is the difference between your formula and as opposed to using long dan xie gan tang versus ba zheng san, what we learned in school? Okay, long dan xie gan tang is not cold enough. And secondly, it's too expensive. Ba zheng san is good, but it will cause diarrhea. So usually I do not use it unless the patient is very choppy and constipated. Oh, I see. Uh -huh. They don't. I think patients don't like to have diarrhea for some reason. Okay, the if they're constipated, it's perfect. Otherwise, the zi zi and deep clearing is enough. Yes, absolutely. You want to take five minutes, ten minutes break for a commercial? Okay, we'll take a break for ten minutes and we'll come back. And in the meantime, Dr. Chen can review your questions.